Welcome, folks. Give y'all a minute or two to jump online here. Amen. Bless you, Sister Shastic Morgan. Good to see you online, Sister. Oh, Faithful Sane Champion is online. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's start our Tuesday evening Bible study. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and adore you, dear God, for your tender mercies, oh God, for your grace, for your love, oh God, that was directed toward us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and you, dear God, we ask, oh God, that you would bless this Bible study, oh God. Guide us, O God, by your word, by your Holy Spirit, that we may understand and apply, dear Lord, what you will have for us to understand and have for us to apply to our lives and other areas of our lives, O God. Give us ears to hear, O God. Let us hear with clarity, O God, and not, O God, confusion, O God. Let us hear, O God, precisely and accurately, O God, by your Holy Spirit, O God, by your love. Touch us, anoint us right now. Bless your servant, O oh God. Bless those in attendance, O oh God, that they may receive what you have for them. In Jesus Christ's wonderful name, amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. We're touching on grace in many areas, and we're still in grace. It's grace again, my friend. Grace again, my friend having the grace of God and uh, uh, allowing God to uh, manifest his grace in our lives amen amen I'm gonna read here excuse me I'm gonna read here Ephesians 2 4 and 5 and I get some water you shouldn't eat before you preach or before you teach I eat a banana, so let's <clears throat> clear my throat a little bit. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and verses 5, where it reads, But God, but God, who is rich in mercy, but God who is rich in mercy. I don't know if you've ever had anything that is extremely sweet and really rich in flavor to make you kind of uh, uh, jump back, so to speak. Uh, uh, it says, but God who is rich, just to give me an idea about his mercy and the actual uh, uh, intensity of God's mercy, okay, the richness of his mercy. But God who is rich in mercy for his Great love. The Bible says, not just love, but great love, great, countless love, excessive love, unlimited love, abundant love, abundant love. See, God doesn't, he doesn't barely love us, okay? God tremendously loves us. He doesn't barely love us. God tremendously loves us, and God tremendously and abundantly hands out this grace 
towards us. It says, uh, you know, God tremendously loves you. He loves you. He loves me tremendously. Love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins. Even when we, in our spiritual state, were not serving God. God still loved us, okay? In our, in our corrupt thinking, in our corrupt mind, grace was still projected toward us. Okay, and it says, hath quickened us together with Christ. So God, he just didn't direct connect from uh, uh, his grace from him to us. Okay, he got his son involved, Jesus Christ. Okay, and through him, through the sacrifice of Christ, quickened us. Okay, and by grace, we are saved. By grace, we are saved. It is the great love of God. Okay, through grace that separated us from the ways of the world. Okay, by grace are you saved. So when God saves you, uh, amazing saving grace, he pulls you out from those wicked ways of the world in our broken state of living, in our broken state of thinking. A lot of us, okay, uh, don't get offended now. Please don't get offended here. A lot of us, including me, at one point in time, uh, we had some broken thinking. Uh, thinking was just broken. Really no plan. It's just uh, things didn't come to fruition. And our thinking was broken. But through the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, God puts those things back together so we uh, think, okay, and walk circumspectly, okay? We're careful about our planning and things of that nature. God changes things, okay? God just doesn't want us willy-nilly uh, saying, I got grace and I can do whatever I want and things of that nature. God wants us to plan, okay, make adjustments, okay, or modifications, and then execute what he gives to us, okay? Even when we were dead in sins, God flourished with mercy towards us. God flourished with mercy. Okay, not just any mercy. God flourished with mercy. God is rich in mercy. If he's rich in mercy, that means he's flourishing It's in mercy. It's dripping off God. I want to be with God, in God, around God, for God, to God, not against God. I want to be rich in mercy too. I may need mercy tonight. I may need mercy from a stranger the next day. You may need some mercy. Your child may need some mercy. The United States of America needs mercy. I'm here to tell you. That, and it says, have quickened us together with Christ. The United States of America needs to be quickened together with Christ. Let's just put it out there. Things are broken because we have not turned to the Lord. God's grace awaits us. His mercy awaits us. It says right here, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And then it says, Who remembered us in our low estate? God will remember you in your low estate, okay? For his mercy endureth forever. And he hath, and hath redeemed us from our enemies. God will redeem you from your enemies. Why? For his mercy endureth forever. Grace. God's mercy. God's grace. Okay. Is the love and mercy. Okay. Grace is the love and mercy given to us by God because God desires to be with us. Okay. God desires his grace to be with us. God desires us to be with his grace, okay? Not out of his grace, but in his grace. Let me explain something to you. Let me share something to you. There's this, what we call uh, common grace. Think about it, common grace. Common grace is referring to uh, 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 the grace of God that is common to all human mankind. All human mankind. Grace, common grace. You have it. I have it. The sinner man has it. The uh, sinner woman has it. The sinner child has it. Okay. The, the saved folks have it. Common grace. Okay. It's common because it benefits, okay, our experience by what? The whole human race. Uh, if God woke you up this morning 
okay? Saved or not saved, you have experienced God's common grace, okay? Okay? Without distinction, okay, between one person or another, okay? Already default, kind of like the stimulus, but the stimulus has some distinctions on it, okay, that they gave out. People say, uh, well, why do good things happen to evil people that they don't deserve, that they don't deserve God's grace. So why the good things happen into evil people? The Bible says in Isaiah 26, 10, let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. So favor, okay, is showed to the wicked, but they won't learn righteousness. Why? Because the gospel is hid from them. In 2 Corinthians 4, 3, it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Hid to them that are lost, walking without God, in whom the God of this world, meaning the devil, the God of this world, the enemy of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. A lot of folks will believe in their possessions or another person, and they will not believe in God. Well, you say, well, what about those, okay, that have God's grace, uh, that are righteous, that serve him? Amen. Psalms 5.12 says, for thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. There's blessings for the righteous. It didn't say there's blessings for the unrighteous. There's blessings for the righteous. With favor wilt thou comp compass him, okay, as with a shield. Folks that do not serve God won't have this shield. God will favor, okay, those that serve him. There's no two ways about that. God will favor those that serve him, okay. Uh, uh, this grace that God affords us is, it's, not necessarily because of something that we have done or earned. And it's not something created that God says, I'll go ahead and get this love and get this hope and I'll, I'll get this endurance and I'll put it in a little, mix it all together and poof, here's grace. It, it's not like that. Grace is God's favor. Grace is favor, okay? It's the free favor, unearned, undeserved, Okay, help that God gives us so that we will respond to his call, all right, to become his children. This is why God gives us the grace. God wants us to respond to his call, okay, that we will become his children, not a child of the world, not a child of the, uh, 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 a child of the devil. Oh, gosh, we got to, we got to be careful with that one. Some of y'all, uh, 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 um, let's move on. Help me, Lord. God planned all of this, okay? God planned all of this, okay? Be us becoming his children, okay? God's uh, uh, divine plan is in action. Ephesians 1.5 says, Having predestined us unto the adoption of children, by Jesus Christ, okay, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestination. Predestination. It's, it's timely identified. This predestination is timely identified. Okay? This would be the results, okay, from the intervention of Jesus Christ in our lives. Jesus Christ intervenes in our lives, okay? All right, and God speaking as it has, talking about predestination, okay? God speaking as it has and will take place. It's God's time, okay, that God has set up for something to take place down the road. Predestination is a time word, and let, let me uh, elaborate on that. Predestination is a time word. Uh, afternoon is a time word. Uh, daylight is a time word. Later on, time words. Afterwards, tomorrow, before, century, decades, year, calendar. Those are time words. So God, predestination, he set that up. 
So in this predestination bracket here, um, things are going to take place towards me and towards you and towards the world. Okay. It says here, right here, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Adopting children? God adopting children. Okay, let's get there. Adoptive sons, partakers of the divine nature and eternal life. Okay, those that serve God. Those that have surrendered to the Lord. Adoptive sons, okay? God adopts us through his son, Jesus Christ, when we surrender our life to the Lord, okay? Uh, let me help you out with adoption as I help myself. Adoption. Adoption is a person that fits the profile for circumstantial rejection. Okay, when a child is adopted, one of the very many reasons, there's several reasons, is one of them, why the child is adopted because they don't have any parents at all. They don't, uh, uh, or they got a single parent and the mom can't take care of them or the parents cannot take care of them because they have issues, things of that nature. Or uh, the mother might have been a single mother and she passed when uh, she had the baby. So therefore, or there's abuse going on. So the child is adoptive. Those are circumstances, uh, uh, circumstantial uh, uh, rejection. Okay. And so the person is rejected um, by their parents. And so us being born in sin. Okay. Us being born in sin, automatically we're rejected by God. He loves us, but we're still rejected by God because of our sin nature that we are in. So adoption is a person fitting the profile of circumstantial rejection. But God understands, right? He understands with spiritual acceptance. See, God operates with spiritual acceptance, compassion and love by him. And from him to us, which supplies us, God, when he uh, adopts us, okay, and with, through his uh, spiritual acceptance, compassion and love, okay, by him and from him to us, supplies us a roof of refuge. It supplies us, supplies us uh, 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 spiritual protection, okay, and things of that nature from the enemy and from the world here. God knew that he, because through predestination, we read that earlier, God knew that he was going to adopt you, okay, through his son, Jesus Christ, before you even knew that you were you. God already knew that. Before you even knew that you were new, you, God was going to adopt you. Grace can operate, okay, spontaneously. And grace does operate spontaneously. Grace operates unknowingly. Grace does operate unknowingly. Grace operates suddenly. Things just happen, okay? And grace operates naturally from God to people. Generous grace, free, unexpected, undeserved that's what's called divine favor from God and you can have that tonight if you don't feel like you're in God's graces okay and you're feeling like the world is falling apart and you're feeling like you can't make the adjustments from what's going on in life personal and social and economically and across the globe, okay, or maybe you're an external uh, codependent of somebody other's issues that are going on and they vent to you and that person needs grace and you're just feeling weighed down by their burdens and their issues also. God, okay, that divine favor can be afforded towards you today, but you have to make the decision to come into the fold to receive that divine favor favor. Right now, 
America, this nation, and a lot of other nations, we need God's divine favor. There's no two ways about it, okay? And it's free, okay? Free love from God, free clemency from God, free mercy from God, free leniency from God, okay? And then on top of that, we get to share in the divine life with God. Grace is an attribute of God, okay? And it's mostly manifested, it's mo grace is an attribute of God, and it's mostly manifested, okay, uh, uh, towards sinners. It's, mo it's mostly manifested towards sinners. It's the conduit in that relationship right there. Immediately, like I said earlier, there's common grace, okay, common grace to all mankind, to all the human race, common grace, okay, and you have grace towards the sinner, the one that turns their heart to God. Amen. The sinner is redeemed. All right. You've been adopted. All right. Because you are born in sin, circumstantially rejected. Okay. So you've been adopted. The sinner is redeemed. Redeemed. A person redeemed, let's put it like this, a person that has been kidnapped, okay? And because uh, 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 there's a lot of folks right now that are in sin and they don't know that they are kidnapped by the enemy of their soul. They're walking around thinking they're free as all get out, okay? But they are actually kidnapped, and they're working with you at the job and they're talking to you and they're smiling. But spiritually, they have been hijacked and they've been kidnapped and they only have the common grace. They don't have the divine grace operating in their life. They got the grace that wakes them up and gives them a uh, uh, blood flow in their body and movement and things of that nature. They do have that. OK, but they need to be redeemed. OK, because they've been kidnapped. And they, they, being redeemed, they need to be recaptured safely. And God can do that through his loving grace, through his son, Jesus Christ. And returned. And returned. Okay. A lot of us need to return back to God. That's what Jesus did. Jesus Christ paid the price for our sin with the corrective action and redeeming us through his death and resurrection. There's a lot of corrective actions that may need to take place in your life, in my life, in this nation and the world right now. A lot of corrective actions need to take place, okay? Adam and Eve, okay, they were in the garden. They were there. They were uh, spiritual beings. They were, they were there uh, in the garden. They didn't have no sin. They had no sin nature at all. None at all, okay? But here comes the enemy of their soul. He wants to take their grace away. He wants to take their favor away. So Satan comes and... <laughs> In other words, so much. Adam and Eve sell out. I believe Adam and Eve were the first ones to even go to the pawn shop and not even know that they were in the pawn shop. They pondered their soul. They sold out what God had given them, okay? What God had given them. And Jesus Christ, okay, as we're born in sin, all right, he redeems us the same way. Some souls right now, they're kidnapped, some souls right now are in the pawn shop and don't know it. Amen. Uh, you don't know. I know you get what I'm saying. You're in bondage, basically. And it's going to take God's grace to set you free, okay, to get you out. The same thing the way a pawn shop works. That thing is in there, and you have to go in there and pay a price to get that out. And Christ has already paid the price, but a lot of folks want to stay in the pawn shop. A lot of folks uh, 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 
are acting like they're not in the pawn shop spiritually, but you are. Even David said, David said, behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. David knew he was in the pawn shop. David knew he was born in iniquity. David knew that he was sin and sin. David knew he was hijacked and kidnapped from the very womb of his mom when he was born in sin. David knew. This was 2000, over 2,000 years ago. David even knew. He even knew. He's like, I'm not going to fool myself. Something's wrong with this picture here. And something is really wrong with the picture here. And so right now, we need to continue in prayer for the United States of America. We need to continue in prayer for the United States of America and other nations. Uh, who knows what the future holds Things are getting extremely uh, uh, out of hand, extremely out of hand, and it's going to take God's grace, okay? It's going to take the United States of America to turn to God. And I, uh, uh, one of my hopes is that somebody that has a bigger platform out there that's on the news, that's, that's always in the public eye, would stand up and say, hey, folks, America just needs to turn to God. And let's all just turn to God right now. That is my hope that somebody with a big platform out there will say, stand up and say, let's turn to God. We need God's grace. Okay. God has adopted us and we're not acting like his children and things of that nature. Okay. Those that serve God and hopefully folks that there's some folks that will get saved in all of this. But this nation needs God's favor. We need God's divine favor, and we need it now. We need God to uh, 911 this thing, just like the sirens or ambulance coming down the freeway. Make all kind of noise, God. And maybe this is the noise that God is making, okay? All right, so we'll turn to him. Only God knows. Pray for one another. Pray for each other. But understand this. You can be a child of of God today through his son Jesus Christ through his tender love through his tender mercies but you have to make the decision because you never know what tomorrow holds amen don't forget grace common grace predestination God predestinated us okay God adopted us all right because we were rejected all right Right out the gate because of what Adam and Eve did. They sold out. And we want to fit, okay, the profile of God saying to us, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Okay, we want to be a, a good and faithful servant unto the Lord. Amen. Bless you is my prayer. Be mindful of our service this Thursday at 730 also, our service coming up uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock. Join us. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Bless you. Please pray for America. Pray, pray for your families. Pray for those um, just that are suffering. Pray for those <sighs> that are going through. Just pray. Just pray for yourself. You never know what type of law is going to get instituted and there's curfews going on. And in third world countries, curfews are always going on just naturally. That's just how they do it. 10 o'clock, nobody should be on the street. And that's been going on for years. Not because it's hostility. It's because, hey, what are you doing out at night? Period. There's no reason to be out here. The shops are closed. And so we've turned into a 24-7 country where everything's open just about including TV, radio, and everything else is 24-7. And now things are being shut down and we're not being used to held down like this. Whereas other countries, it's normal to them where they just pull the plug on satellite or the internet. It's just like that over there. And so pray for this country that we get it together and that God anoints his country and heals his country and he heals the land and heals the heart of men and women. I love you. God bless you. Talk to you soon. Grace.